as you progress through Mechanica, you're going to find out that your stuff gets spread out pretty far. There are a lot of different resources spread across the map in Mechanica, and uh, it's going to get hard to keep track of everything when you try to set up camp in one centralized location. So today I'm going to show you how to make alerts so that you can keep up with everything going on around your base and not worry so much if your production lines have ceased uh, working. I'm Vortac. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more Mechanica videos and all kinds of games here on the channel. And uh, my question for you today is, tell me what kind of programming operation you would like to see me cover next. I've been asking this in all the videos because there are so many different things you can do with this game. And uh, as the game releases and more updates come out, I expect I'll get more comments later on that uh, go over even more programming things that I can't currently do in this version of the game because we're still in early access. And it, at this stage of recording, it hasn't even dropped on Steam yet. So here's what I'm gonna show you. I've been tinkering with this a lot. Huge shout out to my friend Weemcast for helping me kind of uh, to nail this down. And he also makes Mechanica videos. Don't forget to check him out. Um, you'll see here at my base, I have a sign that says water pump functional. And uh, that basically tells me that my water pump, which is all the way out there, has power. The batteries have not run out. And this works in a fun way. So I'm gonna assume that if you've never seen Mechanica programming before, you're probably like, uh, what? What is going on here? Uh, but I'm going to explain this to you, but we're going to start a little bit more simple than that. And uh, we're going to set up a really simple version of the programming um, alert system that I just showed you. So out here is a little demonstration area. Essentially, we're out of fuel in this flamethrower. Um, so if I look in, I think I programmed it in the flamethrower itself. Yes, we have some stuff going on. Basically, when the button gets pushed, that triggers this whole thing. A button in these situations is very important. You're going to need something to trigger to kick the whole thing off. You're gonna need something like a button. So essentially, when the button's pushed, it executes everything. Let's delete all of this. I'm going to redo it for you guys so you can see step-by-step step how to set up these alerts. All right, starting completely fresh from scratch. We have a screen, we have a button, we have a flamethrower, and we also have a table that's optional. So I'm actually gonna program everything through the button. I prefer programming things through the button because the buttons will exist usually in my centralized location being my base. And I like being able to check up on the programs and edit them at the base. So I'm gonna start at the button and essentially keep it really easy. On button push, right? Uh, we are going to open up the, let's start with the large screen. And this will, uh, we gotta set the display text. We gotta set the text color and we're going to need to do this two different times because we have basically red text and white text red being the fire 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 from earlier fire 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 and then we have the other that reads out of fuel perfect and i'm going to change that to white let's uh let's actually make this orange it's more fiery right out of fuel okay so to get there, we, we can't simply hit the button and turn on the screen, that wouldn't make any sense. What we can use is called a branch. If you go, what I did there is I right click the screen and you can actually search through different functions, uh, but there is a menu with little drop downs. there's all kinds of stuff in here, but yes, just search for branch and uh, you'll be using these a lot. It would also help if we turned the flamethrower on at this point as well. So when the button gets pushed, I want to start spitting fire because it's an emergency. I got I got robots attacking. So the flamethrower turns on now when I hit the button. But when I hit the button, there's also a check that is run through a branch. And that check is under the flamethrower. We're going to go down to has fuel. Now for other objects that take batteries, this changes to has power, which is pretty cool. So this branch is now checking to see if there's fuel. And you'll notice this condition kind of uh, changed when I when I set that little line there. It looks different when it has fuel. Right now, it's just gray. It'll be a darker circle if uh, if there is actually fuel. But essentially, if true, here's what I want to have happen. I'm actually going to change this up a little bit. So if true, I want the display text to read fire, fire, fire. And now there's um, with programming, there's a million ways to set things up. I'm going to make it so after the display text triggers, it also changes the color of the text to orange. You could do that so true goes to both of those or you can, more logically speaking, make a branch that kind of goes out. So now that text color change happens after the text change. So I don't know, some, some people work differently when it comes to programming and how their minds work. I'm gonna do it that way. 
All right. So same thing here. If there is no fuel, it's going to read out of fuel and the text will turn white. All right. The next thing we need, in fact, let's change the text color to pink. I'm changing the color because right now it already reads out of fuel because that was the last thing in the screen. So I'm not going to be able to show you that it works if it's just doing the same thing it was doing before. There's one more element to this. This might seem simple to you and you might be going, okay, this makes perfect sense. We're done, right? There's one more element to this that tripped me up really bad. And that is you need to add a wait timer. What this does is creates a loop so that we can constantly check if there is or is not fuel. Because eventually you're gonna run out of fuel but there's not gonna be any button push to trigger this series of events. So you need a wait timer to loop everything back into. And I would recommend coming off of, just with our branch setup, the color change of the text. You could really come off of these if you want to down here, it doesn't matter. But if you wanna make it look like a nice clean branch, you could do that. We're gonna set this timer to about five seconds. The more time you're willing to wait here, the better it's gonna be because if you, you could set this to point one, but you might end up coming up with an error or a crash because it's going to just, there's gonna be a program running constantly every point one second, and, and that's, not, that's not that good. Um, maybe as the game develops more, you could do something like that. Once the wait timer finishes, it, after five seconds, we're gonna run it back to running the branch again. That's your loop right there, that line. Uh, this is essentially going to make it so constantly we're checking every five seconds to see do we have fuel is there fire or is there not fire all right this is the most simple example i can show you because the flamethrower is really cool it runs out of fuel very fast i mean it's not it, that's not great for when you're being attacked but for this demonstration purpose this is fantastic so i've thrown fuel in it it's already on because i messed something up i i don't understand why it turned on but it does read fire 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 when i hit the button that's good so it's running out of fuel, and when it does, the alert should go back to uh, out of fuel. So let's see, it's gonna run out here any second. They run out so fast. And let's wait, yep, out of fuel in pink text. There you go. So I wonder if something changed in the last update. Let's do that, let's do that again. Yeah, huh, interesting. Nothing is keeping that from being off. I don't know if that's a bug or something I messed up in the programming, but the alert works, so I'm happy. Now you likely won't be setting up a flamethrower in the middle of a field, so let me show you a more practical example of how this could all go down. This is my lithium mine, and uh, you know, it's just an auto miner hooked up to a furnace. The furnace takes fuel, the auto miner takes batteries, and once you, uh, once you turn them both on, you automatically produce lithium ingots, which is great. This is a very common setup you'll see people use in Mechanica all the time. But what happens when it runs out of batteries and or uh, fuel? So here's what we're gonna do. I've set up a program a little more complicated than the one we had before because now we're working on two variables here, the auto miner and the furnace, and we're running things through an AND branch. If both of these are true, then you can execute the, the light color change. So I'm gonna hit the button and see what happens. Up, oh, something's wrong. Something's wrong because that turned red, very bright red. I turned it on and it checked to see if there is power and if there is fuel. And when it turned up false on one of those, we got a 100% brightness red light, big ugly light. If that was true, both of them were true, we'd get a 50% brightness white light. In fact, why don't we make this 100 as well, in case we're far away, and we'll change it to green for like all systems go. All right, so I wonder why that happened. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn these on and that light should change. The fact that this is red is actually probably a good thing and it didn't work, but I get to show you this now. There is kind of an issue. I'm not sure why this happens, but if we drop down on the auto miner and we see has power, there's four different has powers. Uh, when you're using a regular branch, it's easy to identify which one of these has powers is the correct one to pick because the little condition icon is there. On this new and branch I'm using, uh, it's not. So I just have to kind of go through and, oh, there's only one has fuel, that's good. So, let's see, hit the button again, nothing happens. Let's probably, I wonder if it's the last one. There it is, aha, so, watch out for that. I don't know if that's a bug that's gonna change over time, but essentially, you need to go into that drop down and make sure that has power is uh, <laughs> on the correct has power. 
If you're using an AND branch, they'll be a little more difficult to find, but not a big deal. Hopefully, this program makes sense. And now I get an alert while my auto miner's way out in the middle of a valley somewhere. If it decides to crap out of me, I know because the ground is around it is no longer green. So by now, hopefully the water pump screen that we have where it says the water pump is functional makes perfect sense to you. I am confident that my water pump still has battery power because I've turned it on, I've run the command, and the display text has been set, which is awesome. Also, I, re I can remote start the water pump from here because I've set it up so on button push, the water pump turns on and then that triggers the branch to decide whether or not it has power so I've demonstrated how to set up a simple check with the flamethrower. I've shown you a more complex one where you can hook up two machines to check for power and fuel. Let's do one more little tutorial here just to uh, show you a more practical setting where you should probably set this up right away. This is a buddy bot, and if the buddy bot happens to run out of power, you typically don't know. It's just kind of laying out in a field. You've got to go find it. Uh, but at the very least, you should know when to check to see if it's still alive. So I'm, I've hooked a buddy bot up to a switch, and we're going to real quick now set this up just to help cement what you've learned today. So when the switch turns on, the buddy bot turns on. Pretty nice and simple. Bam. When that happens, a branch pops up, and it runs a check to see if the buddy bot has power. Let's see here. Has power, yep. So, we'll put that here. We're gonna hook it up. The condition turned gray. There is There are two different has powers here. So, once I put a battery in, we'll figure out which one we have to actually select. If there is power, we wanna set up a, a, a screen. So, I've hooked up the screen to the switch. We open it up, and now we'll see the small screen is linked. We will set the display text to, uh, if the buddy's working, buddy functional. Hopefully that's not, you know, hopefully that fits on that small screen. And there we go. We can change the color if we want to green just for fun. I would recommend changing the color of the text just so you can visually see if something's gone wrong. And then, of course, we can set the display text to dead buddy. There we go. And change the color of that to obviously red. Oops, that's text again. So set display text color to it's already on red. That's perfect. There we go. So... We're already running a check to see if the buddy is dead or alive. So if false, let's run that branch. And then at the very end, always put your wait timer. So there you go. We got a wait timer. We'll put it up to about five seconds. And uh, every time we change the text color on the screen, we will rerun the loop to check to see if the buddy has gotten his batteries or not. So let's go ahead and throw a battery in the back of the buddy bot here, like so. He's on. Um, dead buddy. Well, that's not accurate. And it's not accurate because the buddy bot has the wrong has power selected. So don't forget that. Uh, again, this might change in a different version of the game. But now we see that it says buddy functional. If we turn the switch off, I, you, you didn't see it, but I just added one where if on switch is off, it turns off the buddy bot. So we can remotely uh, turn him off. And then back on again. Now, it will continue to read buddy functional because the buddy bot hasn't lost power. We've just turned it off ourselves. There's a difference between the buddy bot being off and the buddy bot not having power, which I really like. That that helps me know that I didn't just turn off the buddy bot. It's, it is, in fact, the batteries that are dead. So that is awesome. Uh, but there you go. So hopefully you found this very, very helpful. Uh, I can't wait to see all the different things people are going to be setting up in Mechanica, not just in, in programming alerts, but just programming things in general. Aha! And I know something has gone horribly wrong because the miner has no power. So if we do that, the light turns green. It's back on. Automation at its finest. Thank you so much for watching. Be, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed. And don't forget to let me know what you would like to see next in Mechanica. I will catch you in the next one. See you later.